You know, I talk about a lot of these TVs. Sometimes I forget the history and the origin and just how good they've gotten. Things have come so far. The fact that we can just place a 75 inch TV like this, have it perform the way that it performs, the advancements with LED technology culminating in this particular device. Sometimes you forget. Sometimes you forget to progress. Today we're checking out a new TV from LG and I love TVs, especially big ones. This is a big one, it's a 75 inch TV. QNED technology. What's happening here is an attempt to get somewhere closer to the OLED performance, but at a fraction of the cost with a high-end spec sheet. So this 75 inch display goes all the way up to 8K. And with far more LEDs on the display, you're able to get this uh, a much more precise dimming in order to kind of mimic some of the things that OLED does, being able to darken certain sections of the screen completely so you get that immersive visual effect. So this is the 75 QNED 99. It features quantum dot nano cell mini LED tech. It has the latest processor from LG. They call it the A9. And that's important when you're talking about a resolution like 8K because there's a lot of scaling and stuff that goes on. But obviously you're gonna be watching 4K and things like that and you're gonna wanna have the best experience even though the native resolution of the display is beyond a lot of the stuff you'll be watching. You're kind of, I mean, you're future proofing a little bit there. They've been doing a lot in the game mode for optimization lowering of input lag by changing the amount of processing that happens to the image. So this is a positive thing. We can now have super high-end, large format displays that are actually decent for gaming as well. Oh, I should also mention another cool thing that they've been doing recently is putting in a picture mode, which are calling filmmaker mode, which allows you to once again, limit the amount of processing so that you can enjoy your films uh, closer to the way that the director may have intended without a ton of boost happening, without all kinds of motion enhancers and things like this. So this may produce an experience that's a little closer to what you might have in a cinema, but it's a setting, you can turn it on and off, it's up to you. This is actually a new Magic Remote and uh, it now has NFC. So you can share content between your TV and mobile by just tapping the remote to your device. Sometimes it's just quicker to share from your phone or type on your phone. Well, this will let you move content back and forth by tapping just the remote to your phone. HDMI 8K 60 Hertz, two separate inputs, two USB A ports, a LAN port so you can hardwire for networking, optical digital audio out. There's an antenna and cable in, an IR blaster. And then on this side, we have two more ER and ARC HDMI 8K 60 Hertz in ports for 8K HDMI ports. Almost no bezel, very slim bezel the whole way around. Oh, he's like, what? This is a newer remote, Netflix, Disney Plus, Prime Video, LG channels, dedicated button for Google Assistant as well as Alexa. Of course, we still have our nice tactile wheel. There's our NFC logo for uh, tapping our smartphone. And then everything else is pretty typical here. I should also mention, in case you're unfamiliar with LG TVs, you can still uh, use this sort of like a mouse, like an air mouse. Look at that, TikTok is on there. TikTok on a TV, yeah, you wanna try it? No, no, no! <laughs> Okay, get out of here. <laughs> Jack, I'm watching TikTok now. Okay, wait, they gave me a few. Yeah. YouTube is a fun. Oh, that's a good shot. That's all right. I'm starting to appreciate now. If you haven't seen 8K content, believe it or not, you can actually watch 8K content on YouTube. LG themselves uploads a ton of it, so they can kind of, I don't know, at least check out what your TV's capable of. It's still amazing to me that you can stream, effectively stream 8K content without any lag. I've lived through all the crap, uh, different tech. Well, it wasn't crap at the time. I mean, you dealt with it. It's kind of the best you could do. Edge. Okay, I had that, trash. Then full array, all right, so now we have some local dimming, but then mini LED, same idea, but just so much more granular. So many more dots, need it. More LEDs equals better, got it? Look how much more black this can get, this section, even right near 
the lit up, the bright portion, right around here. You see where I'm aiming? Mo, can you see my, mm -hmm. see my cursor? In the old days, this would all be gray and muddy. Oh, audio. Oh, I was watching the new Dune movie. I was watching the new Dune movie because I got an older 86, which is in my basement. I couldn't make too much noise, so I go down. And I'm seeing the whole section lit up as you move across the, dis the display. Oh, they're that section's getting turned off, and that section's getting, like, you can see it. You've conditioned yourself to the newer tech, so all of a sudden, uh, the other stuff is glaring. The older stuff is kind of glaring in, in uh its inability to perform it in the same way. So let's talk a little bit about this comparison. I have a mini LED display, 75 inches, and of course I have the legendary OLED display, 88 inches. It's two totally different price categories, but I thought this would be an awesome moment to compare the two technologies and give you some of the attributes of each one. Obviously, mini LED is a huge leap from some of the original LED technology getting it ever closer to that OLED type of performance, actually with a couple of advantages. You might not think that there would be advantages at a lower price point, but there are. First advantage that comes to mind is the anti-glare properties of this finish on the display. This thing is not going to have nearly as much glare as the OLED panel. It's actually a little bit brighter in the bright sections of the screen. This thing can blast out a tremendous number of nits. If you're placing this thing in a room that gets a lot of natural light, these advantages um, might be something that you're interested in. Obviously the price is probably something you're gonna be interested in too. Now, when we talk about OLED, the advantages are well known and I've talked about it on the channel many times. You get these tremendously deep blacks. The mini LED attempts to do something similar, you'll see it actually does a pretty good job in these shadow regions. You're gonna see still more contrast. You're gonna st uh, still see deeper blacks on the OLED tech when compared to mini LED. But this, like I said, is a leap compared to the previous tech. If you get off axis with an OLED, your, your viewing angle is fantastic. Like I can still see the screen colors look identical, even at some pretty extreme viewing angles, but still you lose optimal viewing angle a little bit sooner. Here's the thing, the ability to get performance that's anywhere close to OLED at a lower cost is something that a lot of people will want. And I know a lot of people I talk to have avoided going with OLED, particularly in the large format. The main apprehension has been around cost. So I think that this kind of in-between is going to be a popular choice for people. If scale's more important and you still want uh, a pretty high quality image, then you can look towards QNED and mini LED. Uh, let me know down in the comments which one you would go for. Higher cost, deepest blacks possible, or slightly more brightness, slightly better when it comes to reflections, and of course the lower cost of mini LED. Uh, those are your options. Let me know which one you would go for and why down in the comments. The title of that video, eight hours, relaxing, meditation, calming, sleep well, sleep forever.